Welcome back everybody to yet another episode and in today's episode we're going to be talking about a question that I've been getting asked a lot is what are my top baits and areas and stuff that I'm going to be fishing for um, in re those really really hot days you know it's summertime we're getting into those really really hot days so what are the top baits that I'm going to use and what are the top areas I'm going to be looking for on those super hot days so stay tuned. All right, guys, so like I said, we're talking about uh, what I'm going to be using on those really hot, hot days. Right now, we're in the middle of summer, and uh, sometimes, you know, people don't have the luxury of uh, fishing early, early morning. Um, if you get up really early in the summertime, 4 o'clock, get out there, you know, get on that really early morning bite, um, you can generally catch a really good fish in that early morning, but sometimes people only have a few hours to fish, so they're looking to get out, you know, whenever they can you know and sometimes you get out there maybe you know noon one o'clock two o'clock super super hot out you know almost 100 degrees water temps way up um where where are going to be those high percentage areas that are going to hold fish and what can you use to catch those fish as well all right before we jump into this video guys i have recently just partnered with a jig company called super kid jigs and then today they just got my package jigs in the mail and i already opened them i wasn't going to open them but i already opened it so i figured we might as well uh, show you guys what i got in the package so let's dive right in here guys obviously the big item we got in here um right here i kind of ripped it when i took it out but this is just a nice uh, Super K Jig, um, this is their logo here, uh, Super K Jig carpet sticker. Um, this is one of their smaller car uh, carpet stickers, so uh, it was also, you know, they have a really nice big one. Um, so this is really cool, definitely looking forward to throwing that on the boat. And then the jigs, guys, there is like just a pile of, of jigs that I got in this, in this package here, and I'll, I'll go through each jig that I got here really quick and uh, show you why I got them. All right, so as you guys know, I fish a ton of swim jigs here, so I got myself uh, throwing some of these uh, these quarter ounce swim jigs here. Um, just got, you know, white colored and then uh, black and blue. You guys know how I feel about black and blue and white for swim jigs here. Uh, so I got uh, three of each on these, so I got you know, three of these suckers and three of these quarter ounce jigs. Um, this may not seem like a big deal to you guys, um, but it is kind of, it is for me here, is I actually really love the packaging that these things come in. Um, I like that they're just, you know, little bags. And the reason why I like that is because my uh, tackle tray that I have for swim jigs, um, you know, if, if I don't have to break these out of the package, you know, um, and mix them in with, tack, you know, a tackle that has, you know, had water on it and whatnot, um, I love to keep them in the package like this. So when you buy a swim jig, sometimes they come in harder plastic, uh, you know, uh, packaging. Um, but then you got to take them out of that to put them in your tackle trays and stuff. What I really like about these is you can just push it into the little slot in the tackle tray and shut it. You don't ever have to take them out of here. Um, it's probably not a big deal to most of you guys, um, but for me, I really like the packaging that these come in. Like I said, these are all the swim jigs that I got with it. Just a, you know, a good stack of swim jigs. You can never have enough of these suckers, uh, especially on the Mississippi River. Get bit off by pike quite a bit, so it's definitely nice to have a bunch of these. Next thing that I got are um, what they call the uh, K-Plunk um, jigs here, and I got two of them black and blue in color. Uh, these are just kind of your versatile flipping jigs here. These are both half ounces, um, but they call them the K-Plunk, um, but they're kind of their most versatile jig. You can do a lot with them. You can, you know, throw them under docks, um, you know, flip them around different types of cover and stuff like that, but I got black and blue, and I went up to half ounce on these. <clears throat> Usually use three-eighths ounce on jigs, but uh, really been uh, digging the, uh, the half ounce on uh, jigs lately so got a couple of them and then I got a couple of these half ounce black and blue skipping jigs now these are these are specifically for uh, for skipping okay the head on these is uh, is different and I can take them out and show you real quick so really quick here guys uh, the head of this jig you can see that it's it's not like your typical jig here it's pretty kind of flat up there these are specifically designed for skipping under docks or under like really, really uh, tight cover. Um, the head will come and hit the water and it'll just skip really nice. So I've never bought any skipping jigs. So I figured I told them, you know what, send me some uh, send me some skipping jigs here and we'll, we'll, we'll give them a try. So I'm really excited to try these suckers out. Oh, not only do they do uh, jigs guys, they also do some terminal tackles. So um, I personally got a pack of uh, these net heads here. Um, just, you know, for, for net rigs, I got a quarter ounce actually, which are these bigger ones here, um, which might be a little heavier. And then I got a little bit smaller weighted ones, but they also have some terminal tackle on there um, that you guys can also check out on their website, which I will link their website down below so you can check them out. But uh, they also have some terminal tackle on there. So 
Like I said, I got some net heads from them, green pumpkin colored. I'm really excited to try out some net heads. Uh, I haven't fished net heads a whole ton, or net rigs in general, um, but uh, I have a few spots on the river where I think they would do well. And lastly, they sent me the Clacken, they call it. And this thing um, is just, a, it's like a, it's a bladed jig, almost like a chatterbait kind of deal. I'll take it out and show you guys real quick. But here it is, guys. This is just like a bladed jig. It's got the, the blade on here, obviously, and then it's actually got a little bit of a weed guard here. Uh, to protect the hook here, um, but yeah, just like a, you know, almost like a chatterbait in uh, in my sense. Black and blue, love black and blue. So um, definitely gonna try this sucker out and see if we can catch on it. You know, um, I like that it has a uh, a weed guard on it. That's kind of a big plus for me, especially fishing around a lot of vegetation and stuff like that. So super excited to try this sucker out. All right, guys. So like I said, that is everything that I got from Super K Jigs. Um, especially if you guys are local from the area, they are also from a local company in Wisconsin here. Um, so I will link their uh, their website down below in the description. So if you guys want to go check them out and see what they have to offer for you guys, I'd highly suggest it. Um, these are also all hand tied jigs. I'd like to say that these are all hand tied jigs. Um, and they have really nice skirts on them so they hold up a lot longer um, and you're not having to sit there and spend so much money on jigs. So like I said, I'll link them down in the description. Go check them out. All right guys, so now we're gonna be talking about what are my lures, what am I using on those super, super hot days of fishing. Now, um, when I'm getting out there, the big thing that I'm focusing on is shadows here. Now, everybody knows what shadows are and everything like that. Um, but what I'm really looking for is when I'm going down a bank or I'm looking at certain areas, especially with vegetation, um, I like to look for spots that are showing out really good shadows. So if I have, you know, reeds overhanging on a little bit of a cut bank, or I just have grass that kind of pokes out and there's a good shadow line there, that's stuff that I'm gonna target. So a prime example on the Mississippi River, you know, uh, you have sloughs and stuff that go up and down and all throughout the Mississippi River, um, especially when you find a decently like narrow slough and you got duckweed kind of piling up in certain spots, that's gonna create really good shadows to throw stuff on. Um, my favorite thing to throw um, in that duckweed and in those shadows first thing is gonna be a frog, guys. That is gonna be my first lure that I'm probably gonna toss in the summertime is a frog. Uh, for one, it's a really, really fun bite to get on, and it just fishes super effective in those super thick grassy areas, um, especially around duckweed, thick mats, and stuff like that. We also have uh, what we call deer tongue um, around here um, that uh, is like super leafy and just gets really, really thick. Um, and it's really easy to throw a frog in through there. And like I said, it, they create really good shadows and really good cover for those bass um, that keep it nice and cool for them. So, you know, when you, when you find those good areas where you see good shadows, you may be going down a bank and you're seeing shadows, but then all of a sudden there's a good clump or there's a good spot where it's really kind of like, man, there's gotta be a fish sitting in that spot. You know, um, a frog is gonna be my go-to for that. Uh, that is gonna be probably the first thing I'm gonna get throw in there. Now, the other thing that I would like to say to you guys is when you get into those areas where you have those shadows, those big shadows, and you're throwing frogs through there, you may not be getting actually bit off of the frog, um, but there's just those areas where you're like, it's just too good not to have uh, a fish in that area. You might have thrown a frog through there several times or threw a frog in there and got bit at, but he didn't, but you know, he, he didn't eat that frog. Now that's something where a punching setup like this is gonna come in handy. Now all this is is a pegged, you know, a little uh, bobber stopper right here um, with an ounce tungsten weight, which you can go heavier on with like a four to five uh, sized flipping hook. Um, this is usually, usually I throw like a rage craw or a rage structure bug. This is a structure bug, but uh, it's missing some appendages on there because it kind of, uh, it's, it's just beat up. But those areas where, you know, you've got really good shadow, you threw a frog through, there's just gotta be something in there. Um, or, you know, they're just not hitting off of the frog that day, guys. Sometimes it's just not getting bit off of the frog, but a great way to catch fish in those hot, hot summer days is looking for those thick, matted up areas where you can take a punching rig and throw in there and punch through those mats, get down below, get next to the fish there, and uh, get those big bites. So a punching setup is another go-to on those super, super hot days where those fish are just not really reactive to the frog or you know on a good uh, reaction bite. Um, the punching rig is a great way to get down through those mats and get a bite. Now the next bait that I'm gonna suggest to you guys is actually going to be 
a 10 inch worm here, 10 inch ribbon tail worm. Uh, this is a Guggenbaits Mondo worm here. Uh, what I really like about this worm compared to other ribbon tail worms is I just like that the tail has a little bit of a lip on it actually. So it just creates a little bit more vibration in the water. Um, and I just like how it's built, honestly, guys. The, the, this Mondo worm is actually a really nice, uh, really nice bait. Um, but a 10 inch worm can be a great lure choice uh, for the summertime, those really, really hot days. Reason being is those fish, you know, especially those bigger fish are looking for like just a nice, easy, big meal to eat. You know, a 10 inch worm is a nice big bait for them to go after. Um, and those bigger fish, they see that and it's just an easy target for them and it's a nice, good meal. Now, where am I gonna throw this worm? You know, like I said, you're looking for those shadows and stuff like that. Sometimes I like to throw this, uh, especially close to really cut banks or really steep ledges. I like to work this Mondo worm off of, um, especially like a prime example is when we won uh, that one bass fishing tournament in one of my earlier videos. Um, this was the ticket like all day long. And where I threw this, I threw this near uh, really like steep ledges where we'd have like, you know, like, you know, two to three feet of water and all of a sudden it just really drops down into like 15 to 20 feet of water. Um, those big steep drops, the Mondo worm was just key on. And it wasn't that those fish were sitting, you know, at the very bottom at that 15 to 18 feet. Um, but they were sitting, you know, on those ledges there. And uh, the Mondo Worm, it just seemed, I threw, you know, swim jigs through there and everything, and the Mondo Worm came in clutch. Um, it also worked really, really well on some cut banks with some good cover as well, um, where throwing a frog in or a punching rig really wasn't necessary, um, but the Mondo Worm just throwing in there next to those was drawing fish out of them. Now, what I also like about this big 10 inch worm, guys, is not only can you throw it in those shallow covered areas like those cut banks and stuff, but deep water pockets, deep water holes, really steep ledges, like I said before, but deep water holes. Um, you can throw this on a you know half ounce to almost an ounce tungsten, probably around half ounce. Throw it out there and just slowly drag those deep holes. Um, a 10 inch worm is a great bait for doing that. People preach doing that all the same, all the time, you know. So now we're kind of transitioning into the deeper water. If I can't if I can't catch them shallow, I'm gonna move deep on fish, guys. Uh, most of the time I can find them shallow in that thicker grass, but sometimes you just not, you're not finding them in that shallow water. So you got to move to those deep holes and uh, dragging a big 10 inch worm through those deep, deep holes or steep ledges is just an absolute banger for bass in the summertime. Now, like I said, we're moving to that deeper water stuff, guys, and something that, you know, you obviously... You know, when you get into those deep holes, there's not a lot of vegetation in those areas and stuff like that. There may be some uh, down there, but you, most of the time you can rip through there. But um, a crankbait, guys, obviously a big old crankbait, just getting down there, getting near those fish, getting out of school, getting them fired up with a crankbait is a great way to do it. Um, if, like I said, if I can't catch them shallow, I'm gonna move deep. Um, I'm probably going to, if I, if I come across a good hole and I'm seeing fish are down there on the imaging, probably gonna throw a crankbait down there. If I'm not getting bit, but I know there's fish down there, that's when I'm gonna go to like a football jig or I'm gonna throw that big 10 inch worm down there to try to pull them out of there. But if you're not catching them shallow guys in those really shady covered areas, or you find a good school that's, you know, happens to be deep in those uh, deeper holes, you gotta get down there with something. So a crankbait, great summertime lure, especially when you need to get deep for those big fish, um, you know, get in those deeper holes and whatnot. You just can't go wrong with a crankbait. Now a lure that I almost forgot to mention, but uh, always have it tied on and always end up using one of these during the summertime. And uh, it's one of the most versatile baits that you can pretty much use all year round. It's just a jig, guys, like I said, this is just a half ounce jig here um, from Super K Jigs, like I said, but uh, these just a jig, guys. A jig is a great lure all times of the year, and you can mix it up. Like this is a you know just a versatile half ounce jig, but if I'm fishing those deeper holes and stuff, and I'm gonna throw a jig, I'm gonna throw a football jig. If I'm gonna fish around shallow cover weed line stuff that's you know thick, fishing those shadows, and found my favorite area to fish a jig in the summertime by you know by far, guys, is going to be docks. Um, I don't have to show you guys what a dock looks like. You know what a dock looks like, but that's going to cast a great shadow, a great hiding spot for bass. They're going to get tucked up underneath those docks next to those, uh, next to the metal parts of the docks going into the water are great spots to target with the jig. Um, love throwing a jig around docks. You can skip them under docks really well. 
pop through there, work a dock pretty quick and move on to the next one. But bass are always under docks, you know guys. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you caught plenty of fish off of docks. Um, but a jig is probably my number one for fishing around docks. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up the video. Like I said guys, I'm pretty much gonna be looking for those, those shadow areas in the shallows, um, docks, things like that that are gonna cast really, really good shadows, thick cover. And I don't mean just like a big, huge area of thick cover. You wanna look for isolated clumps of thick cover, guys. That's where those fish are gonna, you know, be sitting. Um, you know, if you cast into those high percentage areas with a good cover and you catch a small one in there, um, that's probably not gonna be your most high percentage area. Most of the really good fish in that area are gonna hang out in the best area. So if you find a good spot in that whole area that's got really, really good shadows and everything and cast in there and catch a small one, it's probably not going to be the best area for a big fish because there should be a big fish in there to begin with. But like I said, I'm looking for those good isolated clumps of good shade. And if I have to fish deep, guys, you've seen it there. I mean, it's pretty standard. Crankbaits are pretty big for fishing deep. Uh, football jigs, big old worms, you know, 10 inch worms are, I can't preach enough, 10 inch worms in the summertime are just absolutely killer. Um, there used to be a time where I thought a 10 inch worm, no way, man, I, I just feel like it's too big. Um, I used to think that, but uh, after fishing a 10 inch worm plenty of times, um, it's definitely not too big. You'll get a lot of really good bites off of the worm. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember to like and subscribe. We're almost at 3,000 subs. At 5,000 subs, we're doing a rod and reel giveaway. So if you wanna be entered in that, you gotta subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video and uh, keep fishing hard.